So getting back on the ICO 950A project, rebuild from scratch. Um, <clears throat> I just heard that the transformer is on its way, so I thought with that encouragement I would uh, look to uh, put the rest of the components together. So I got a new 6x5 rectifier and a socket to put it in. Uh, new capacitors and resistors and stuff where I need them. Uh, there are still some mounted on the uh, selector switch and they measure good so we'll run with those for now because they're uh, like uh, close tolerance ones and so uh, we'll run with those. I had to get a new magic eye. Believe it or not I thought the magic eye in this would be fine because I thought well it hasn't gonna, it's not going to be left on for hours and hours and hours every day for years but Maybe it was anyway. It's so dim you can barely see it in the dark. So I got a new one, which um, fortunately they're reasonably common, the 1629. Uh, for some reason, the glass enclosure on this one is much shorter than that one than the old one. So we have a little bit of fitting to do to get it to sit nicely up against the uh, front panel. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just waiting for the transformer to show up in the mail, uh, and we can get started on it. Okay guys, the uh, mains transformer, uh, that's my candidate for rebuilding the uh, ICO 950A has arrived. So this is it. Um, it has two 115 volt primary windings, which obviously I can put in series. Um, it has a whole range of high voltage secondaries and low voltage secondaries for filaments. Um, and so yes, it uh, it looks like a good candidate here. Um, nothing much in the way of indications on it, but essentially these are the two primaries over here. These are the different secondaries in terms of high voltage. And then on the other side here we have different voltages for the different 5.2 and 6.6 .6 volt um, secondaries for uh, filaments and stuff. Um, <clears throat> It's very heavy. It's uh, like uh, 1.35 kilos. Uh, I'll translate that to uh, pounds uh, later. Um, so uh, let's see how it fits on the uh, chassis. Uh, so this is basically the uh, <laughs> the main metal mounting plate from inside the Echo. Um, I've stripped it all down completely because I completely cleaned the front panel which goes on here. Uh, <clears throat> and I've dismounted all the heavily modified um, hardware. As you can see somebody had drilled holes in this thing like crazy. Um, so uh, the goal is to uh, fit this transformer on here. It mounts with four, four mil bolts so that'll be easy. Um, and I can fit it reasonably centrally uh, and re-expose the original hole for the rectifier tube uh, so I can, I'll have to drill out the rivets and refit the oct a new octal socket in there um, and yes, yeah, since it fits reasonably central on that plate uh, it, it'll be very heavy but at least it should be reasonably balanced because the transformer won't be up at one end and uh, it is somewhat meatier uh, than the one I've taken out, so uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be good. We just have to uh, decide on what the best way to uh, configure all the different winding options are. Um, so yes, I'm very pleased with that. It's not cheap, this thing is pretty expensive, um, but it looks like a very high quality device and so uh, definitely worth um, having a shot at uh, rebuilding uh, this capacitance bridge. So once I do a little bit of uh, figuring out of how I'm going to wire it all up and everything else, uh, we'll get stuck into putting this thing back together. Okay, so I'm starting a physical um, redesign if you like it, this thing. Yeah. So I've uh, got the transformer. This is just a dry fit. Uh, there were so many holes uh, cut in the metal here for the previous where the guy had inserted a bunch of uh, 
miniature valves that uh, I wasn't sure how well it would hold the weight of this um, so I put a fairly robust uh, aluminium strip underneath here uh, and it bolts through to the transformer um, so that's held on there reasonably well and uh, I have enough room here to uh, to install the uh, rectifier so uh, tube socket so once I get all the physical stuff done we'll give it a good polish up okay so here is a, uh, a mock-up um, I think all the uh, physical metalwork stuff is done at this point so we're pretty much ready to fit the front panel on and then the control so we can start rewiring um, the, uh, it basically I think is going okay the only problem is this here is the clearance here is pretty much zero um, so I hope that's not going to be uh, too much of a problem um, the mount for the uh, magic eye was just I just think it's a really weak design because this bracket here had nothing to hold it it was flopping around all over the place and I thought that's not good when you have a delicate uh, vacuum tube stuck on the top um, so I put a nice piece of hardwood in there to lock it down solid um, so hopefully that'll be better uh, and underneath as I mentioned before I have the strengthening plate here and I soldered in two tag strips uh, so I can put all my components across there um, and uh, yeah make it a lot tidier um, than it was before Okay, at this point I just want to make sure I finalize on the actual circuit diagram I want to use because I'm obviously going to use the 90, 950A for everything except the power supply and I'm going to use the 950B power supply which is generally reckoned to be more reliable. Um, uh, the other thing I think I'm going to do is make a real-time uh, one-to-one drawing of the pinouts on the transformer and stick it on here uh, front and back. Um, just to uh, make sure I don't make any mistakes uh, when it comes to turning the theory into the practice. Okay, here we go for now. Uh, one last minute change. Uh, I fitted a, a holder for a line fuse. It's maybe not in the uh, ideal position, but there's so many holes drilled in the subframe that I used an existing hole uh, for the line fuse. Um, yeah, so we should be about ready to start wiring this thing up. So, one step at a time. So I've just wired up the uh, transformer primary um, through the line fuse, etc. Um, it's a temporary thing. Uh, so I can fire this up and just verify that all the voltages in the secondaries are as I expect them to be before we go any further. Uh, a bit of an update on the uh, 950A. Um, bit of a change in the layout. Uh, you remember from a previous clip I mentioned that I wasn't too pleased with the rectifier sitting right up against the transformer. In fact it was touching. Um, and so a colleague on one of the other forums agreed that definitely it's not a good idea uh, to have it so close. Um, and so I was toying with moving the transformer then I thought since there was a gap in the subframe over here where I could move the, uh, the valve I just moved the valve over here and put a dummy plate on here with a, a hole in a grommet so I can use it for routing cables um, and so uh, yeah so far so good so um, I think layout wise we're good at this point um, I've started wiring up the 500 volt uh, the voltage doubler and all that stuff um, because I want to test that all that works before I go any further uh, since that's the main reason I got this thing in the first place so uh, yeah looking a bit neater and tidier than the one that uh, came in from eBay um, uh, the next snag could be a serious one uh, the main control pot which goes in the center uh, right here this is a uh, has to be at least I think a 4 watt uh, wire wound device um, 
there is good continuity end to end 10k um, but as I move the, um, the spindle around there's three or four points where it suddenly goes OC um, and so I had a quick look inside and either the resistance wire has stretched or the former that it's wound around has shrunk which is probably more likely um, so the resistance wire has sort of tended to bunch up in places uh, and then there's gaps in other places and so as the wiper comes around it encounters these little areas along the travel where it's not actually touching any of the wire um, and um, it seems like these types of wire bond pot are not exactly easy to find so I've been struggling to find a supplier for something like this um, so I may be forced with opening this up again and trying to move that wire around so it's evenly distributed around the former and then trying to glue it in place um, but I think I have a high probability of snapping the wire um, so the hunt online continues for a replacement for this guy um, but so far it's proving problematic so uh, any suggestions for uh, a 10k at least 4 watt wire bound or at least 4 watt uh, pot uh, let me know okay so that's where it is at the moment I think that'll do for now um, I just got the dummy uh, I got the old magic iron at the moment so I can wire up the uh, the, the base um, because it's the tu it's the tube that's clamped not the base um, and so uh, yeah, I'll put in the uh, replacement magic eye when we're all good to go. But first things first, got to get that verified 500 volt supply works and varies nicely from the control on the front, etc., etc. And then we'll go from there.